Welcome to another episode of Riding and Wrenching, the biggest little YouTube channel on the entire interwebs. I am your host, Q the Rider, and in today's episode, I'm going to talk about the differences in owning my two road glides. I've got my 2018 Harley Davidson Road Glide Ultra, and I've got my brand new 2023 Harley Davidson CBO. So if you have one of the older road glides, or street glides for that matter, and you're thinking about upgrading, but you want to know how much of a difference is it owning or switching from the old bike to the new bike, that's what I'm gonna talk about. But before I get started, I do have a couple of announcements and things that I want to cover very quickly. Uh, first, I wanna give a shout out and a thank you to my good friend, Eric from Kraken's Garage. Uh, I received a little box from Eric, and what this says, I'm gonna open this at the end of the video. I'm not gonna do it right now. But Eric did a fundraiser for the American, or for a cancer charity. I believe it was breast cancer charity, and I believe it was the American Cancer Society, but I'm not sure. But anyway, he sent this gift to me, so we're going to open this up at the end of the video and go take a look. But if you haven't checked out Eric's channel, uh, please go do so. He's a very genuine guy, and uh, he puts his money where his mouth is. That's all I'm going to say. Just a, a, a great guy, great channel. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is some upcoming video and uh, videos that we're going to do. I've got a couple of new Advan Black products that we're going to install. Both are going to go on the 2018 Road Glide. One is a Tour Pack liner. It's amazing. You got, you, got, you got to see this thing. It's absolutely incredible. Looking forward to sharing that with you as well as a turn brake light for my Tour Pack on this bike. Uh, also, we're going to do another video on the 18 Road Glide talking about my Stage 2. If you watched my Stage 2 video, I'll put a link to it right here. It was too loud, so I had to address that. So I changed out the baffles on my tab mufflers on here, and it sounds amazing. So we're gonna do a video with a sound comparison between a stage two with the zombie baffles compared to the stage two with their medium baffles. Big difference. Uh, a couple of trips I have planned, bikes, brews, and barbecue. I'm hoping my job doesn't screw up my trip, but I'm planning to be in Arkansas for that motorcycle rally. It's a very cool rally. If you haven't attended that rally in the past, you may want to check it out. I will be there along with a lot of my other friends, content creators, uh, GQ, uh, Kelly B Gliding, and a number of other people are going to be there. It's going to be an absolute blast. We're going to do a meet and greet at a couple of places out there, but I'll announce that in a future video. Also, there's going to be a motorcycle rally in Knoxville, Tennessee. This is their first one. I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to be there hopefully. Uh, and in November, Robert Simmons, be the boss of your motorcycle. He's going to have his third anniversary luncheon down in Pooler, Georgia. I'm going to be there so that I can beat the brakes off of Joe Go from Joe Go's Motorcycle Adventures. He's challenged me to a slow race. I will not lose. And also, I've got some more motorcycle classes that I have planned, and I'm going to review all of them on my channel. I'm really excited to share this first one. This is the Champ Riding School. I can't wait to take this class. I've heard so many good things about it. I actually met uh, the Wyman brothers who uh, ride the Harley uh, bikes and uh, uh, the bagger races. So they're, I don't know if they founded it or, or if they're just instructors, but had an opportunity to chat with them about the school, and I can't wait to take it this class. It's going to be amazing, and I'm going to cover that on my YouTube channel. I'm going to cover that here on Riding and Wrenching. I'm also going to take Lock and Lean 201. Both of these classes are going to be next year. I had planned, I had thought about taking a champ school this year, but I just can't do it. That's going to get pushed back to next year. And of course, I will be going down to Pooler to participate in Robert's, Robert Simmons practice sessions. I'll be doing that as well. All right, so we got all that out of, out of the way. Let's get into the topic. So the biggest difference between these two bikes is the motor. Hands down, the biggest difference. Now, there are three things about this motor that makes it so significantly better than my older Road Glide. The power, heat management, and fuel economy. So let's talk about power first. It's fast. The throttle response is phenomenal. Pick a gear, you twist the throttle, you're moving. Passing power is excellent. It just has a seemingly endless amount of power. I keep saying that, but it's, I just don't know a better way to say it, that the motor in here is extraordinary, especially coming from 107. Now, on this bike, I have a Stage 2 
107, and it's quick. It's got great power, but this one blows it away. Now, heat management, let's talk about that. So you have a bigger motor, it's more powerful, and it handles heat differently. Both of these bikes are water-cooled. Now, on my older bike, and if you have one of the older Road Glides or Ultra Laminates where you have the lower fairings with the radiators in them, there's little vents here. And these vents, that's where the heat comes out. So if you happen to have your foot on the highway peg, all of that heat is hitting you in the leg, and sometimes it's going up your pants leg. It's not always comfortable, so you have to accommodate for that. Sometimes I'll tuck my pant legs into my boots to keep the heat from hitting me, but the bottom line is all that heat is coming right at you. And with, again, with your foot on the highway peg, sometimes it's throwing the heat directly at the rider's face. This bike is handling the heat differently because the radiator is behind the front wheel and it directs all that heat to the ground. Much better design. Much, much better. Now, this bike doesn't have lower fairings, so that's, that's a trade-off, I guess. I actually prefer having lower fairings uh, for a number of reasons, but they're used on this bike to house the radiators, and it just throws all that heat at your face. So just from heat management, this bike is much better. Now, as good as the heat management is, as good as the power is, the fuel economy on this bike is extraordinary. Now, since I bought this bike, I haven't ridden my 18 Road Glide a lot. So this past weekend, I went on about a thousand mile ride and to get the old Road Glide out back on the road so that I could really feel the difference. And the fuel economy, I'm just gonna give you some, apps, some, uh, some numbers here. So the worst fuel economy I got on this trip was in the low 30s, 30, I think it was about 31 miles a gallon. It was my fault. I may have been going a little bit fast, but I always go the same speed. I, I, I don't baby my bikes. So I don't expect to get premium fuel economy. 31 miles a gallon was atrocious. Now, the best fuel economy that I got on the bike was probably about 35 or 36. And I was probably took it, maybe I backed off a little bit, I don't know. But I just don't like getting past. That, that's a personal... I don't know, a personal hang-up I have, especially on a motorcycle. I don't, like to, I don't like for anybody to pass me. On this bike, I also did a long trip uh, from Memphis to Milwaukee to Maumee, Ohio, back down to Memphis. That's, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,000 miles. And the best fuel economy I got on this bike, I don't know what it was. I didn't calculate it. But I will tell you that I had about 250 miles on a tank, and I'm still going and the fuel gauge said I still had about a quarter of a tank gas left. I thought my fuel gauge was off. I'm like, there's no way that's impossible. Not as fast as I'm going. Pulled over at the next gas station, and I could only get a little bit more than four and a half gallons in the tank. Holy crap, I could have made 300 miles off a tank of gas. I've never done that before on a motorcycle, so that was extraordinary to me. But that only happened once. You know, my typical mileage on this bike is about... 42 or 43 miles a gallon. Now, for comparison's sake, I've got about 6,000 miles on this bike so far, 85,000 on this one. I'll say the worst fuel economy I got on this bike was about 39 miles a gallon. So just the fuel economy, it's just extraordinary. But I also think that the fuel economy is shading how I feel about the seat on this bike. Because I have talked about the seat before and how hard it is. But the difference is, between this bike, is I'm, only, I'm getting off this bike about every two hours to put gas in it. This one, you can go well past two hours. You can get to two and a half hours or maybe even three hours before you refill the tank again. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of time to sit on a motorcycle seat. And so this seat is really at a disadvantage because you're sitting on it so much longer. So I mean, I'm saying that to say, my issue might be with the fuel economy, is that it's too good. It's, and I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's just a fact. But I'm still gonna do something with the seat because I need it to be a little bit softer, but I'm also gonna have to change how I refuel this bike and just go by time instead of miles. Because after about two hours, I need to get off the bike to stretch my legs out. So maybe that'll make a difference. So I'm gonna be riding to Atlanta this weekend. I'm gonna take this bike and I'm gonna do gas up at the same spots that I stopped riding this bike, just to see if that makes the seat a little bit more comfortable. 
The next thing I want to talk about is the sound system. In my prior videos, I have said some not too kind things about the sound system in my new CVO. And specifically, I said that you can't hear it at max volume on the freeway. It's just too quiet. I was wrong. I was wrong. Now, let me tell you what happened. When I first bought this bike, I turned the radio on at low speed, low volume, and it's cranking out a lot of bass. And as soon as I heard that, I'm like, oh, that's not going to work for me. It sounds good, but once you put the radio at max volume, you're going to be pushing all that bass through your speakers. That's how you blow speakers up. And so I went into the EQ setting on here and took all of that stuff down. I took everything down. I'm like, this way I can go to max volume. Don't have to worry about damaging my speakers. But what I did is I undermined how the system worked. And now when I went to max volume, you couldn't hear it at all. So what I did, I went back to the custom EQ settings and Harley has one called Harley Signature Sound. I use that one. And again, that brings all of that bass back at low volume. But I'm gonna give a shout out to Carlos from NVS Audio because he put out a phenomenal video where he did some testing and discovered that um, the system has some intelligence built into it so that the bass only increases up to about 60%, about 60 percent of max volume. And beyond that, the bass stays level. This way, you're not going to push too much bass out through the speakers. And what it does for you, it gives you great sound quality. doesn't matter how fast you're going. So during these 6,000 miles with a lot of highway riding, I'm at max volume and the speakers are fine. They sound absolutely fine. And the nice thing about it, again, at low speeds, you get a lot of bass. And so it just a, it's a great sounding system. And during my trip to Atlanta, I was kind of missing all of that bass at low speeds on this bike. But at high speeds, my six speakers are still louder than the four speakers on this bike. So there's, there's some trade-off going back and forward. But I can tell you that I, um, on my trips on this bike, I've been listening to podcasts and audiobooks and all different types of music. You can hear it loud and clear, um, 80, 90 miles an hour. Sounds fine. Now, the next big difference between these two bikes is the hand controls. Now, everyone knows that they changed all the hand controls on the new CVOs, but once you're hopping back and forth between the bikes, it can get a little confusing. Now, I've got 85,000 miles of riding on this bike, so this one feels more comfortable to me just because I've been using it for so long. Because after I came back, I hopped on this bike and I'm like, oh my God, how do I use these controls? And it took me a little while to get used to them again. But again, hopping on this bike, it's a piece of cake. That's something that I'm going to adjust to. I'll get used to it, but it's just different. And they're completely different because everything is in, like in a different spot. So it's, it, it gets a little weird sometimes trying to remember because you're going on muscle memory and muscle memory doesn't work when you're bouncing back and forth between different bikes. Other than that, um, I will say that I'm glad I bought this, uh, the new CVO. It's a phenomenal bike. I love the technology in it. Um, I have had a couple of minor issues with it, and I'm going to call them minor. I mean, I guess I could call them insignificant, but that would not be true. But they're not major issues either. So I'm going to call them minor, and I'm grateful because I think they are issues that are easily fixed by Harley-Davidson. They're going to have to do some research and try to figure out what's happening. So here's what I experienced. Uh, there's two faults that have happened with the bike, one with the kickstand. There's a kickstand kill switch. Uh, that kill switch malfunctioned on me at slow speeds, caused me to drop my bike. Not a big deal, but I just didn't like that it killed the engine because it thought the kickstand was down, but it wasn't. Uh, and I'm not sure what caused that, I, and I'm not 100% sure it was the bike's fault. It could have been some kind of road debris that popped up there because it's a magnetic switch, and I don't know, maybe something weird happened. I, I just don't know. The other issue was the um, tip-over warning. It has a tip-over warning. It pops up on the screen, and once you get that tip-over warning, uh, you can't do anything with the bike until you clear it. Well, the problem is that the bike had not been tipped over. It was sitting in the garage overnight. I go to start the bike the next day, and I got a tip-over warning. I'm like, what, what the heck is that? In fact, it was sitting right where it is now. If the bike had tipped over, it would have tipped over onto my car. You would have heard a scream 
no matter where you are in the world, <laughs> if I dropped my bike onto my Mustang, that would hurt. But no, so no, my bike did not get tipped over, but something triggered the tip over warning. And I still don't know what caused that. But the nice thing about problems like that is that I think they're easily fixable with, uh, by, by Harley Davidson. I, I can't fix those issues. That's something that Harley's going to have to fix. And I think they can. And I think there'll be some kind of a software update sometime in the future where they will address those issues. Now, the next thing I want to do, just talk about some of the updates I've done to this bike to make it so comfortable. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. Uh, I got 14 inch KST handlebars. I love KST bars. I'm going to be adding KST bars to this bike at some point, but I really, really like these KST bars. We have 21 inch front wheels from Coastal Moto uh, that absolutely ruined the ride on my bike because <laughs> I do long distance riding and I don't want to do anything to my bike that's going to negatively impact the ride quality. Well, these big wheels impacted my ride quality. So what I did, I had Wilbur suspension put on front and rear, two thumbs up to Wilbur suspension. Um, Maybe some point in the future we may do something with the suspension on this bike, but actually the suspension on it is actually pretty good. But that was necessary on this bike once I put the big wheels on it to get my rod quality back up where I want it to be. Uh, my motor, it's a 107, but it's a stage two hard, uh, with a tab header, tab mufflers, star 3030 racing cam. I'm gonna do another video on this bike because I did some, I changed out the baffles on here because after I did the stage two, it was actually too loud. I, 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 I couldn't do it. It was way, way too loud. So I changed the baffles out. So we're gonna do a video doing a sound comparison between uh, the zombie baffles and the medium baffles with a stage two. Harley hammock seat, that's a custom seat. Had it recovered, added, added some more padding to it. Sounds great. We have Advan Black painted interfering, sound stream head radio. Precision power amp and speakers. We have a six speaker setup on here now, including saddlebag speakers, and this thing is loud. Perfect for long distance riding. So I want to give a shout out to Jay from Volunteer Audio. Um, uh, we did that install together. We have some custom dynamics headlights uh, on this bike. And so that was also pretty cool, seeing the difference between the headlights on this bike versus the new LED headlights that are on the Harley. The headlights on here, wow. Oh man, they're really, really, really good. I don't know how the aftermarket is going to address that because I don't know how you're going to make it better. I mean, short of bringing the sun up at night, I, I don't know what they're going to do. And of course, other creature comforts like your highway pegs. I've got motorcycle drop guards on both bikes, hand guards, um, my floorboards. These are the Kahuna Collection floorboards, which I absolutely love. And if you do long distance riding, you want floorboards like this because they have a thick rubber isolator. And what that does, it makes, or, or it isolates all the vibration from the motor from going into your legs. So if you're gonna be doing an iron butt ride or you're gonna be doing a 20 hour ride or something crazy like that, anything that contributes to fatigue, you want to address it. This is something a lot of people don't think about. Quality floorboards that isolate the engine vibration. They make a difference. Trust me, try it. You can thank me later. I've also added, let's see, we got heated grips because I did that at the same time I did the uh, KST bars, obviously, uh, windscreen, which is good. It's at a, actually at a pretty good height. And the windscreen difference between these two, this you got the big, tall 12 inch windscreen on here. I don't want to do another video on it because I'm getting a 10 inch windscreen for this bike and we're going to do a comparison between the 10 and the 12 inch windscreen because there are actually some advantages to this big gigantic thing. It's not very attractive, but man, I'm telling you, there's, there's some things about this windscreen I, I like that we'll talk about in a future video. All right, well, that's all I have. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the unboxing from what I got from Kraken's Garage. So let's take a look at that. So that's his logo there. And it's not the first time Eric has sent me a box, so I want to give a shout out to him, but he always does his artwork on there. So very cool. Well, let's open it up. Very cool. There's a hat. 
Kraken's logo. It's a limited edition Kraken's logo hat uh, with the breast cancer awareness. It's pink, of course, and there's zero chance <laughs> that this little hat is going to fit on my big head. Look at that. Zero chance. Um, oh, I appreciate it, Eric, <laughs> but <laughs> there's nothing I could do to this hat to make it fit this head. Look at that. It's almost embarrassing how big my head is. But I really appreciate the gift. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, and I do want to encourage everyone, uh, if you haven't gone to Eric's channel, go check him out. He's always doing something on there for other people. And I think that's such a cool thing. Now he's also, oh wow, look at this. He wrote us a letter here. Let's check this out. Oh, it's got a Kraken... Um, seal on it so this must be something special let's open it up and this letter is going to make it into the riding and wrenching garage wall all right letter says q thank you for the donation to my breast cancer fundraiser before you get annoyed <laughs> i paid for this hat um your donation will go to the i have no idea what that word is s I have no idea what that says. To the, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, because of good folks uh, like you, the world is a better place. Well, Eric, I appreciate it, man. That, that's a very kind thing to say. And good Lord, I don't know what's S, five, I, I don't know what that says. I think it's something nice. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. That means a lot. Uh, again, this is going to go up on the wall here in the riding and wrenching garage uh, right next to the last letter you sent me, man. I really appreciate you, and I appreciate you did uh, for raising money uh, for cancer awareness. Um, you know, if your family has not been, most people have either been impacted directly or indirectly or somebody you know has been uh, uh, affected by cancer. Um, you know, it's, it's a dreadful disease or condition, I'm not sure, disease, I'm not sure what, what you call cancer, but it's, it's dreadful. And, you know, it affects people in different ways. You know, it, it ends people's life way too early. And it, sometimes it's quick and nasty, and sometimes it's drawn out. And I, you know, any little thing that I can do to participate in a fundraiser like this, yeah, I'm, I'm all about that. So Eric, I appreciate you for organizing this and putting it together and allowing me to participate. This is Q, I'm writing, I'm wrenching, I'm out. I had a, what they call a Harley Topper. Okay. You know what that is? I have no idea what a Harley Topper is. It sounded like ring, ding, 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 <laughs> 125 cc, yep. two stroke. Okay. Right, made by Harley Davidson, and this was 1959. Wow. When it was the Mustang that was without tears. With it, the airmen from Tuskegee patrolled the skies over Europe, clearing pathways for our bum groups and protecting them as they went about the business of helping win the war. They were called the Red Tail.